Exile by Brian O'Hare. Here's a little secret. The Marine Corps needs enemies. It lives for them. Whether it's bonsai charging Japanese, Chinese hordes, or bogeyman Viet Cong, it doesn't matter. And when it can't find an enemy, the Marine Corps eats its young. And for Lieutenant Colonel Mad Mike Madigan, Battalion Commander Lieutenant Francis Keene is perfect. It all starts back in August of 91, just before the first Persian Gulf War on deployment to Okinawa when one of Keene's lance criminals punches out an NCO over a bar girl. Alcohol related, as the logbook duly notes. Keene saves his ass from the brig. Mad Mike goes high and to the right, because when the old man says, Circle the wagons, you circle the goddamn wagons. As payback, Keene suffers every shit job and indignity, until finally exiled to the BOQ, the Bachelor's Officer's Quarters, and put in hack, a kind of house arrest for violating the Seventh Order of the Century, to talk to no one except in the line of duty, while serving as an officer of the day. So, into exile King goes like some biblical mystic, alone and barefoot. Word spreads. From his monk's cell in the B.O.Q., Keene receives a steady stream of enlisted marines, of all races and ethnicities, bearing gifts of beef jerky, cans of beer, and soft-core pornography from the shelves of the PX. Even honey. The offending bar girl, the face that launched a thousand fists, makes a tray of lump here and chow fun noodles. Keene becomes a folk hero, yet Mad Mike's humiliations seem only to intensify Keene's fame. And it's the way King bears his wounds, bordering on insubordination, that makes Mad Bike absolutely lose his shit. King is like one of those limestone caves riddling the mountains, surrounding the Okinawan base, where doomed Japanese took cover from the marine fury during the war. To be blasted out by satchel charges and flamethrowers, Mad Mike is going to bunk a bust of the son of a bitch. That February, on the eve of the Gulf War, that most blessed of marine events since the ruin of Viet Cong and Hugh City, <laughs> Mad Mike finally gets his chance. Dispatching Keane and his marines to a vacant grid coordinate, miles from the battalion, now assembling along the Kuwaiti border, to load 55-gallon drums of oil onto a five-ton truck and... With each drum weighing almost 500 pounds, it's clearly a setup. They have no forklift, no special equipment, no tools other than misappropriated youth. And best of all, there will be no combat action ripping for Keen and his men. Just since dead, Mad Mike's personal fuck you like a hitman's shot to the face at point blank range. Now, stripped to their t-shirts and stroked with, stoked with sweat, they are hard at work. The Marines shiver in the sharp air. They talk loudly as the January sun dissolves into an oily veil. It's cold, dog! They laugh, laughing off the casual brutality of being Marines, their bosses referring to them as bodies instead of men, the long absences from family. The comic will pay. Yet, they don't begrudge the Marine Corps their deal, not at all. It's far preferable to anonymous lives installing drywall, cable, invisible men from the American fringe, lives flaring hot and going cold. For now, at least, they are Marines. And if that demands a ruined back or a nagging limp from loading oil drums in a far-up desert, well then, so be it. King lands his own back to the task, just like everyone else. One more swinging dick, just another body. Then something shifts in the air, almost imperceptibly. The Marines snap too, 
focusing like dogs catching the scent of a threat, noses twitching, tails erect. In the distance, the sound of a groaning diesel engine. Keen stands carefully using the truck bumper for support, an old man at 25, and goes forward to meet the yet unseen vehicle. Whatever, whoever it is, it isn't a good thing. The diesel rattles closer. As the vehicle materializes in the pearly smoke, the Marines mass behind Keen instinctively. The Humvee's blacked out headlights burn flatly in the sandy gloom, stopping abruptly as if surprised to see Keen and his men. The engine cuts with a severe finality. The passenger door bangs open and Mag Mike tumbles out in a pale fury. Behind him, Corporal Lowe uncoils his long frame apologetically from the driver's seat. He cautiously surveys Keane's platoon, calculating the odds. Mad Mike is finished with pleasantries, the possum playing, the eggshell walking. <laughs> that shit is dead, dead as dirt. Mike, Mad Mike stands with hands on hips and squints. A strict video of Wyatt Earp before gunfight at the OK Corral. Jesus Christ, but you goddamn shit burns! He spits tobacco into a plastic water bottle. Just dicking around! You all waiting on a good humor, man! Marines stare dumbly. Speaking of, where is he? Lieutenant Shipper! Keen swallows hard. His throat stricken by fear as much as dehydration. Here, sir! What the fuck was that? Sand off like you got some balls, Lieutenant! Here, sir! Get over here! Mad Mike stabs the air with a cocktail wean forefinger. Right here, lad, where I can't see you! Keen obeys. Mad Mike is a Kodiak tobacco man. The wad packs his lower lip defiantly, set like a cartoon bulldog. His wintergreen and MRE coffee sour breath blows hot on Keen's face. What kind of go fuck you got going on here, Lieutenant? I come all the way out here to check on your slippery ass, and lo and behold, nobody's wearing helmets, no flak jackets, there's no security. You think you're at the goddamn beach? Bean stands and stares, his mind an embarrassing and sudden blank. I asked you a question, Lieutenant. You come to attention when speaking to your commanding officer. King stiffens to attention. Just us out here, so... We need a forklift. Shut your goddamn suck, Lieutenant! Mad Mike laughs darkly as if remembering a private joke and spits into his water bottle again, chasing it with a big leak slug off a can of Coke. You know what pissing me off most? Excuses. Especially excuses made by know-it-all sea lawyer lieutenants. The words are damp with special emphasis placed on lieutenant. For reinforcing King's sub-shit status, just one more insubstantial goat turd in a desert full of insubstantial goat turds. Mad Mike tosses the coke can, matter-of-factly unholsters the forty-five strapped to his chest. You know what this is? King stares at the weapon. It's a forty-five, sir! No fucking shit. You know what else this is? My authority says I can do whatever the fuck I want. Mad Mike chambers around. You understand who's running the show here, right? He raises the pistol above their heads. It bangs suddenly three times like a judge's gavel. The spent brass clinking onto the pack saying, I am! He points the pistol accusingly at King. I find you guilty of being a disloyal fuck. Give me your bars and get in the back of the Humvee, Lieutenant. I'm relieving you of your command. King clears his throat. Considers his words. Sir, my father always said, you point a weapon at a man, you better be ready to kill him. Mad Mike leans into Cain, his attention feral, almost carnal, under different circumstances, possibly a prelude to a kiss. But there will be no kiss. Warily, Cain waits for the punchline as Mad Mike lets out a long, slow, 
turning to smile at please, smile at low, and then back at Keith. Wild turkey and warm coke, the speciality of the house. The official drink of the Persian Gulf War, courtesy, no doubt, of the degenerates running the AT&T tent back at Manfred. The tang of booze lingers stubbornly on the crock-pot slurry of Mad Mike's breath. This is what I think of you, and your old man. Mad Mike attempts to reholster his pistol after several tries. He gives up, holding the pistol in his hand. Fuck this sticking around! Keen dares to look at Mad Mike. Cut shorter, twenty years older and a thousand beers heavier. This raw fact slowed to take hold as the first dregs of sobriety stir in Mad Mike's head. Give me your bars and get in the back of the vehicle, Lieutenant, now! Surely this order is rooted in an ingrained faith in the established order of things. Trappings of a rational society where a place where citizens stop at stop signs and said please and thank you and all Marines well trained and respect small pieces of metal on an officer's collar denoting rank state us some rank this is not that place King remains silent he smiles with a directness and simplicity acknowledging for a brief moment their shared intimacy Mad Mike waves the pistol impatiently as if swatting an annoying bug let's go lieutenant Keen slaps the forty-five from Mad Mike's hand, ejecting the round from the chamber and the magazine from the grip. He launches the magazine off into the wind, watching as it sails off. Mad Mike! His eye twitches almost imperceptibly. Like a drill instructor to a new recruit, Keen presents the weapon butt first to Mad Mike, whispering, Muscle discipline, sir! There is no return. Mad uh, Mike at least understands that. He steps back from Keen, takes a defiant stream of Kodiak fly into the dirt, and announces to the doctor, Yeah, I don't have time to hold your hand, Lieutenant. I've got a war to win, a nation to liberate, bad guys to punish. Get that vehicle back to battalion, ASAP. Mad Mike wheels on his boot and beelines back for the Humvee, barking at low, Saddle up! Low refolds his body back into the cramped vehicle as Mad Mike stares straight ahead and the Humvee jars awake, does a slow U-turn and disappears into the orange rind twilight, back to the war and the glory. King watches as the Humvee melts away, its uncertain diesel growing fainter until, finally, all is silent again. Turns to his marine, they regard one another as opposite shores, across a great gulf, in terms of rank, certainly, but also in terms of race and even class. But they understand something about each other, undefiled, something that cannot be put into mere words or even spoken out loud, something ancient. War is inevitable. Without end, you choose your sides, there are no guarantees. There will always be another Mad Mike. He'll be there. Always. And like the Marine Corps itself, Mad Mike is as immortal as the snow globe desert dust now surrounding him. So, while the night wind snakes across the dusty floor, keen eyeballs the old drums, just dark shapes now. It spits. <laughs>